Hi everyone, I'm Tess and I live in the Dutch windy city of Groningen. So did you know that my hometown and its province were responsible for one ninth of the Dutch transatlantic uh, trafficking of enslaved Africans? And this colonial heritage and its effects on art is currently being mediated by the Groninger Museum, which is over there. Um, in their Black in Groningen exhibition. So let's go and take a look. What we see here is Groninger colonial art that is mediated by accompanying them with fictional stories written by Black Groninger author Van Bacherif to give voice to the unknown Black servants that are portrayed. What I'm researching is what elements of decolonization can be found in the shorts by Famba Sharif. So important to know is that decolonization is the destabilization of normalized, established perspectives and narratives of colonial pasts and their legacies. Examples are the imperial narrative in which a country nostalgically glorifies their colonial past by focusing on their riches and accomplishments and viewing certain people as problem people that are other and that are yet to become part of modernity. My methodology for finding out these decolonizing elements in the stories is based on narrative studies in which one analyzes how texts function and what kind of meaning they make. Firstly, I'm going to be contextualizing the shorts by playing, uh, placing them into a genre, which I have already done. I believe the stories belong to the neo-slave narrative genre, in which, which the writer fictionalizes a life story of an imagined enslaved person to make us reflect on the past, but also on the present. Um, and since the experience of the enslaved and the bigger themes are crucial in neo-slave narratives, this leads me to analyze the stories uh, by utilizing two tools of narratology. The first one is Jeanette's tool of focalization, which basically amounts to who perceives the story. And the second one is Phelan's thematic level meaning uh, what gets triggered by the text that expresses ideas that are representative of something larger. What is quickly obvious to me is that all of the stories really center the experience of the enslaved, which points to focalization. I also have some ideas for themes, but as I do most of my research at home using this handy pamphlet in which Famba's stories are written in Dutch and in English, let's talk some more over there. Firstly, focalization. So I believe that there is internal focalization in all of the short stories because we are made privy to the knowledge that is inside of the character's mind. We read about their thoughts, their feelings, their hopes, their dreams, etc. Um, making us co-experience what it is like to be inside of the mind of the enslaved person. And regarding decolonization, this creates universes of um, a different kind of understanding that critique the hegemonic imperial narrative. And also voice is given to people who are silenced in this history and whose experience is, is, isn't in the, in the historic canon, um, kind of creating this pluralism. So a pluralism of understanding so that we can see that we have to view history from multiple perspectives and that the truth is neither singular nor unique. There is also some zero focalization inside some stories since the enslaved focalizer seems aware of their audience, kind of like this meta awareness, and their knowledge sometimes crosses space and time. They have access to limit, uh, limitless information, it seems like, and this kind of ties in with the next point, which is our first theme. The first theme is the future. So this is recurring in a lot of stories. One character talks about how he's, he is a shell, uh, a ghost of his former self, and that he doesn't have a future anymore. But um, a majority of the stories talk about the future in a hopeful way. They talk about uh, a black man being the most uh, powerful leader on, in the world, 
Barack Obama. They talk about the Black Panthers fighting for more equality. They talk about their ancestors being free. They talk about um, how their story would live on into the future and how nothing is set in stone and that we can change oppression. So this has to do with the decolonial theory of refuturing, in which they use emotion and effect of hope by transgressing linear time and holding on to the possibility that the future can be shaped and that it can be improved. The second theme I could find was re-describing Africa. There's a story, for instance, about a mighty African king with a rich background coming to visit his blood relative, baby Jesus, and bringing coffee to the world. Or the story about the lost great African civilization of Atlantis. And what these do is the decolonial endeavor of rethinking African history, because the imperial narrative tells us that Africa has no history. It is wild, it is backwards, it is inferior. And in rethinking African history, uh, descendants can take pride in their heritage and others can see, that the hist can see or view the history and the culture in a different way. And again, forming a counter narrative to the imperial one. I'm going to do research in order to find and analyze more themes. So this is it for now. Um, I thank you for joining me and I thank you for watching. Bye!